the red lights on. Look at the camera. There's your camera. Go. Oh, shit. Okay. It's Thursday, the 23rd of September, 2021. I'm Commander Jan Trax, and this is the Loose Screws Podcast. <laughs> Joining me tonight is, I'm going to go bottom to top, Commander Tierval. Ty, how are you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Man, it's uh, so uh, I was going to save this for later, but I don't think I can save it for later. Uh, <laughs> Act Razor Renaissance is out. I didn't know this thing was even a thing until today. It's a remaster of the original Act Razor game that was on Super Nintendo. I love this game. I love this game. I'm not even playing it yet, but uh, I'm downloading it as we speak. So I'll probably like skip around and shit on my city, shitty ass internet. So. What kind of game is it? <laughs> okay, Did you say so, it was a Nintendo game? What? It was it was a Super Nintendo game back in the day. It was called ActRaiser. Back then, it was made by Square Enix, or maybe just by Enix. Uh, Square. It was Square first, right? Or I guess Enix existed too. Anyway. Yeah. yeah anyway. Anyway. So, um, they. So it's it starts off as like a side scroller action game, like your typical. You know, you're running around with a sword and you're hitting things with a with your sword and you're killing things and you know, things are great. Anyway, yeah. when you get through killing things, you then go into what's called city builder mode. And what city builder mode is, is, um, wait, can I guess you, know, you build cities? Yeah, I know. Right. But the cool thing about <laughs> it is that, so like you're playing like, this is like this God for lack of a better way to do. It, who's trying to like revitalize, excuse me, revitalize the world after, I don't know, some sort of catastrophe. I don't know what sort of catastrophe, yeah. We went through, but anyway, so. Out of uh, ice cream, probably. Probably out of ice cream. I mean, Blue Bell ran out, so they were too busy murdering folks. So, but, uh, man, I'm excited. I love that game. And uh, visuals look good. Like I said, I haven't played it yet, but it's like 30 bucks on Steam. I think it's on PlayStation and on Switch and probably Xbox and it's probably on all the things. So Nice. Relive that childhood. I, w- I will, buddy. I will. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that uh, hype. I know because all right. So this is not really a, an a uh, elite dangerous thing. This is a uh, Microsoft Flight Sim thing, but we're all kind of simmers anyway. Hype Performance Group released their beta update for their uh, Airbus H145 helicopter. It is. I am playing it right now, tech trying it out, and uh, I'm excited about this because they're finally converting. The numbers from uh, European to American numbers. So it makes me wait, a happy camp. Wait, 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 you're going to you have mean, different numbers? numbers? You mean units? Yes. So a lot of the units of measurement, <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, the original avionics of this uh, release of this helicopter were in uh, like metric and uh, millibars and stuff like that. Well, the update to the helicopter now puts it into American uh, standard numbers because <laughs> damn right, America. Damn right. <laughs> Sorry, European friends. <laughs> Look. Yes. Look. I mean, Q-ch- I got- <laughs> Q-chig. <laughs> Normally, you know, I am completely pro the metric system, <laughs> but but on this scenario, uh, y'all are just wrong. So. <laughs> you only need the metric system for grams and millimeters, baby. Here, here, here's what I'll say. Uh, America invented the helicopter. I'm sorry. America invented the uh, airplane and we invented the car. And when they invent, uh, when European invents a, a major mode of travel, <clears> they <throat> can determine what unit of measurement we use. That's all I got to say. So <laughs> we invented pineapple on pizza. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, I'll shut up now. So, steering steering back in the direction of the podcast. Also joining us tonight is Nurgle. Hi. I don't know how I follow that. Oh. Say something you don't, about bitch, pens, you don't. man. No, <laughs> refuse. Uh, dude, doing doing pretty good. It's been a busy ass cloud car week at work. I'm happy to actually be playing the game some tonight, even if we are suffering from patch sickness. <laughs> we I all know that. Mm-hmm. That that day one patch hangover. Yeah. Uh, also here, Commander Lieutenant Commander Data. Hello. Hey. 
Good evening. I'm doing okay. Yeah, the, the the game Ty was talking about, I think, was part of the big a big Nintendo event today. Uh, and I I uh, casually keep up with general gaming news because I'm a a real gamer, you know. Oh yeah, with the card and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Probably the most disturbing news to come out of that was I think they're actually making another live action Mario movie. Oh. Yes. Oh, but I've but been the first waiting. one was so good. How could they yeah. totally delete that first one on me? How could you improve on the classic? You probably can't. Mm-hmm. But yeah. The movie that cried out not to be made. <laughs> <laughs> that they won't, like, Nintendo won't even acknowledge exists anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, don't we want a remake of that at this point? <laughs> I don't know if it's a good no. idea. No, I think. I mean, they, it was pretty flawless the first time. I don't know they, what y'all are talking about. They, <laughs> they they killed it so hard the first time. There's no reason to take another shot. Okay, the movie was yeah. bad, but I mean, yeah. like, just because the movie's bad, don't I mean? Oh. I want to give I, it another shot. So, and, and so I, think I it's haven't actually seen this. Be, it's going to be animated, I think. Not. Uh, I haven't not seen this action. movie since I was a kid. Yeah. Well, we should all do a watch party. Yeah. Uh, it seems like just in time to save dubs, NL Hate has dropped in. How are you? Yes. Oh, do I get away with saying greetings and salutations this time? Sure. Uh, he didn't say that, I think. Excellent. So, Excellent. Yeah. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> uh, and also, of course, Commander Dubs has been here the whole time. No, I'm not here. <laughs> trying to give him extra time to prepare for the podcast. So uh, I was just going to say that I listened to the episode last week, and Chig is not here for me to, to sort of congratulate, but it, I thought you all did a fantastic job. And I think you all should just chill about who's in charge of the podcast, because it seems to come out basically the same no matter who's in charge. And hopefully that time, this time that I point that out, it'll stick and everybody can just relax it's fine. No, we it's fine. will great. panic. <laughs> Every also, time. I I noticed from um, when I listen back to an episode of the show, I get to the end and then the my podcast player will start playing the next episode. So it's like some other one, right? And so something else comes on and I realize that I have a tendency to say the same little turns of phrase as I introduce everybody. And I think it's because of the order that I, like I don't want to mm-hmm. say so-and-so's here how are you and the next person's like hello and then it's like it's like this weird you know cyclical pattern that i do and i could hear myself doing it this time and now i have a complex about it so (laughs) that's what i was thinking about just now everyone notices (laughs) after i told everyone to calm down about hosting the show and it's not a big deal i'm gonna freak out everyone pretends to like you no one actually likes you yeah, I know. We're all just pretending. Yeah. <laughs> or is that well, Chig? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when the, am I ever going to be on a show with Chig again? Cuz I think we're just alternating now. It does seem that mm. way. Yeah. Um anywho, anywho, anyways. Oh gosh, what have we been what have we been doing? It's it's a big day. There's a lot going on. Let me just say, there's a lot on here. There's there's squadron update full of wins, 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 and wins, and wins, and wins again. Uh, Odyssey update 7 came, and Horizon's quality of life update, snore, cue cricket sounds. And uh, there's a bunch of story stuff, and then Dr. K. Ross announced leaving FDev, we assume for real this time. So, uh, what have we been up to this past week since we last... Saw our heroes. Dubs, go first. I have been murdering Thargoids and fucking with the gang gank gankers in Cornsar. <laughs> That's been basically my whole week. Cool. Well, I was there for some of that. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, we that, that's like, it. Uh, that, that was that was all of my 60, 160 million in Thargoids that night in between gankers. <laughs> And, yeah, and that did was not wild get messing with them too. Yeah. yeah, and not once was I successfully ganked. That's right. That's right. Though they tried, they eventually left. 
Yeah, Denied. even though we didn't, we we might not have blown them up, but wasting a half an hour of their time, I consider that to be a win. I mean, you know. Yeah, uh, we definitely would have blown him up if he'd stuck around. He definitely left at precisely the right time. <laughs> but there were three of us. I'm not trying to like flex on a professional ganker, you know. But we were fine. We were not going to lose that fight. But there were three of us. But anyway, three of you in AX ships. Yeah, with yeah, it took us forever to damage yeah, him because yeah. we only had Gauss cannons. Yeah. But I'm against willing... his full meta PvP ship. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, right. it might not have been full meta. I'm willing to bet he went full thermal resistance on that ship, knowing Probably. that we would be there with Gauss cannons, which have right. basically a full thermal damage yeah. with next to no penetration into internal modules. So shields and you know module reinforcements aren't even that important. So right. fighting a ship that's outfitted for AX kind of like kicking a baby. Yeah, no. yeah, he it was it was clear the I mean the hull was dropping. It was clearly a pretty beefy little ship, but it was yeah, I bet you're right. Engineered for thermal and we couldn't hardly penetrate anything. The modules were invincible. Um, but you know, he did need to leave then or he was going to eventually yeah. lose. <laughs> and and yet <laughs> he was since ammo like six times already. And yet he was still denied. Yes, and still decided to mouth off in chat, which was oh so delicious. Uh, so anyway, that's cool. Uh, mm. Hey, how's it going with you, man? What you been doing? Uh, well, just stoking the BGS fire. And I, I was there that night. I was actually ganked in Cornsar while in a wing with you all. Oh. I, I, I was there for that. I witnessed it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he but, got the adder when when he got you alone. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, my un, unshielded adder alone. You know, in all heavy because I, it was there to fight Thargoids. Yeah, if I'd been just a bit faster, I might have been able to get away. But uh, you yeah. know, yeah. other stuff I've been up to is uh, helping Chig climb. The, I mean, playing CQC. No, <laughs> seriously though, Chig has moved up two whole spots in the leaderboard. Uh, if we don't count that. Uh, Musketeer has been removed from the leaderboard. If you count Musketeer having left the leaderboard, he moved up three <laughs> spots. Why did he move the leaderboard or leave it? He uh, gets routinely gets flagged as a error because his numbers are so uh, wild. So the sense. system removes him as an outlier and he has to be manually re-entered. Apparently. Yeah. And it's worth noting that after CQC night the other night, and still thanks massively to Chig by himself as a squadron we're up to fourth place in the CQC rankings. Mm-hmm. Which 3.99 of that is Chig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My uh my experience this past week large pretty much mirrored you alls. I think those were the nights that I got on. We were able to wing up and do the the corn sar AX stuff. That's that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Winging up. Did everybody fill up, up on guardian materials? I didn't get a chance to do that, but oh well. I think and, the, were the combat mm-hmm. aftermaths still there? Oh, I guess we'll talk about that. I don't know. Oh, <clears throat> but uh, wing combat versus the Thargoids worked okay for us, right? There was one heart that I remember took took longer than it should have to kill. I don't know if you all oh, experienced I, any bad ones I think, when I wasn't there. Yeah. Oh, over the whole night, um, at least three times we had Invincible Heart. But the thing is, like, if you just wait for them to retract and send it back out again, you can get it. Uh, okay. It, like, okay. resets or something. So, But that all should be fixed now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> v- verification to, to come after the hot fix, <laughs> the incoming, <laughs> uh, <laughs> impending hot fix. Yeah. Um, how about Nurgle? Uh, <laughs> I know some of what you've been doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, work related. We're not even going to go into that. That's not worth clown car music. Just Fair cue enough. that in the background and that's all there is to it. It's been a really busy week. I haven't had a lot of chance to play uh, post the weekend. But as as you mentioned in the rundown this morning or at the top of the show, we between going into expansion or actually expanding last Thursday about the time the show was over and the end of the weekend, the, the squadron won six wars in five systems. Wow. 
So yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, and there was an awful lot, awful lot going on with all of that through the weekend, and I got to do quite a bit of it. So I got to play a fair amount. Pretty happy with that. Nifty. And Ty, I haven't seen you in a little bit. What's going on besides Nintendo games? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been so busy with work and other stuff. It's, I haven't had a chance to do much, really. So, uh, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't been in the game. I don't think I've been in the game at all. I'll be honest with you, it's better safe to say it. Um, all right, you don't have to apologize to me. Yeah, I know. But still, <laughs> it's still, still, still. Still. Well, if you didn't fill up on Guardian components, you missed out because they had, they were all just sitting there, waiting to be scooped up. Uh, yeah, that's what I. That's I went ahead I and hear. got full. I was full that's on everything weird. except technology components, anyway. But anyway, well, if it's my turn, then I, I actually have been playing quite a bit, and I went and pulled the trigger pun intended, <laughs> on uh. a pair of VKB sticks. What? So I uh, have... <clears throat> now I'm flying dual stick with my VKBs and big boy sticks for the win. Uh, they are beautiful and fantastic, and I love the dampening in them. They are so smooth. They don't swing around. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I'm still very much getting used to the controls. Like I'm currently just flying around my carrier, like trying to do as complicated navigation as I can um, to get used to it. But um, but it's pretty cool. I did try. So I don't know. There was a lot of talk about this in Discord, and I didn't get to talk about it last week. Uh, although I didn't have them on last Thursday, I got them uh. set up on Tuesday. Uh, this week, but um, there was talk about the the way I intended to set these up, where your the left stick, the one that's for thruster control, is leaned over, and you end up sort of treating the twist like a motorcycle throttle, mm-hmm. and that makes that connection work for that work for me. Um, so there's a mod that you can like 3D print or try to build or something. Um, for like the VKB and the verbal sticks and stuff that essentially offsets the stick. So instead of mounting it at an angle, you the base is still in a normal position, but the stick extension places the stick sort of sideways yeah. and above the normal position. And I thought, well, shoot, I can do that without 3D printing anything because I use uh, articulating monitor face amount arms for my HOTUS mount. Uh, So I could just tilt it at an angle and lock it back down. Uh, So that's what I did. And it kind of works, but eventually I, after playing around with it for a whole night and a little bit the next day, uh, I eventually decided that I don't, it's not the same. Um, Because if you think about it that way, it's it's almost like rowing a, a rowboat. Like mm-hmm. you get that sort of like the angle changes as you push it forward and back. And then your left and right thruster ends up actually being sort of an up and down movement with your hand. And that gets sort of confusing, even if it does make the twist make more sense. Um, Cause if you think about it, like you could either think about it as forward and back like a motorcycle, or you could, a lot of people do up and down on the twist. And then it's sort of like pointing your fingers up and down essentially. So it kind of makes spatial sense uh, physically on your brain. Um, But I've kind of decided it doesn't really work without the 3D printed thing because with the 3D printed thing, it kind of comes up and moves off to the side. So the stick is still centered over its base, but it's turned sideways instead of the base being off to the side. Am I I painting this picture well enough? Yes. I think so, yeah. It makes it look more like a throttle. Right. But the point is the base is still below it. So your left and right is still moving your hand left and right. It's not moving your hand up and down because the base is not tilted. Oh, uh, and so that's gotcha. what I think. I think the 3D printing thing really is necessary to make this whole thing make sense. So I've actually flipped it back up so it's in a, a typical vertical 
stick position. And that was working for me because what I really want is, especially in combat, I want to have up, down, left, right thrust on that main stick because that's what I'm using to like adjust my vector. I'm, I'm pushing the target, the, the target lead reticle essentially where I want it to be in order to land shots while maneuvering around. So that's what I want. I really like forward and backward thrust is sort of almost secondary at that point. And I'm probably going to put that on a different control. I'm trying to get used to it as twist. Um, and so the thing is, with the VKBs I actually got are the Gladiator Next, the GNX ones, which are, they're lower cost because they don't have, the base isn't the same style piece. It's not like an all metal gimbal. They're like plastic parts. So like high quality, hard plastic parts um, with dampening grease and all the tro- proper springs and everything like that. But it's not the same as the bases that have like extensions that are compatible with them. So these really aren't made to use with extensions. So nobody's created a 3D printed piece specifically for this stick. That doesn't mean it can't be done. Um, it's not really recommended by them. It's not made to be done, but um, I don't have a 3D printer. I'm quite interested in getting in touch with some of the people in Discord who do and maybe thinking about trying to design something. But at the end of the day, I'm also quite happy with it in this vertical okay. position. So depending on how difficult it turns out to be, um, I may I may just drop it, but we'll see. I, I Hey, if you have a 3D printer and feel like helping me design something, get in touch. I um, mean, yeah, I'm super excited about it because the, the flight is awesome and the sticks are fantastic. And highly recommend this, by the way, especially if you're thinking about getting into like a more pro level stick from some of the like the Logitech kind of things. Like the feel is just so much more strong and and different and smooth. There's no need to set any dead zones with any of these. Their yep. software, the v- VKB software is amazing. It it requires no driver. The whole thing is run on this um, ARM processor that's in it. Mm-hmm. Um inside the device so you like you load up its control software you calibrate it you program anything like unbelievable things can be programmed into this and it just flashes to the device requires no driver whatsoever there's no software running in windows uh it's amazing it's perfect Very and excited. i'll do it I'll and, print and it. not that terribly expensive no so this this kit like the premium version is is 150 bucks for one stick and wow. that's that's with a that so that's um, essentially designed to be a standalone yeah. unit as well. Like that's what it's sold as. It has a base that has three buttons, two encoders, and a small throttle axis. So like it's a, sort of a direct replacement for somebody who is just buying a stick, you know, like that is a self-contained unit. You know, that like a you know, not a full hotess. You know, um, now I just got two of them, and I'm not really. I'm, well, I am using the base buttons, but the you know, the throttle is sort of a cruise control because mostly I'm not touching that, but it's like a super cruise throttle, you know. So anyway, so I've been going crazy into that. Uh, Dubs, are you saying that you're volunteering to help me design a, a, a um, extended mount? Yes, I will waste all the filament. I don't even care. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we have to check what it is too because the, the one thing that they're recommending is these, these need, to be, need to be printed with something that's strong because of how much stress they're under, but uh, yeah, all right. Well, we'll we'll talk about that later. Anyways, that's quite enough about post SAS. Uh, shall we talk about a squad update? Because there's so much to talk about. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. Incoming priority message. Squadron briefing. So we we already covered the the six wars in five systems over the weekend, um, and that secured control in a couple of systems. That was our invasion war in six Andromeda. That was the final war to to basically close out V six forty. So you know, not only was it a lot of wars going on, but they were they were consequential. Uh, and then the beginning of this week, we kind of settled into okay, we're going to consolidate some of the systems we've got and some of the things we've done, and we're not going to go right back into expansion. And then there was a squirrel moment with something shiny and we're going back into expansion. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, there was a, a, a primed and ready system that's pretty attractive. I just finished redoing the standing orders for that. So, uh, and it looks like we've got Uktomi going into expansion. We're over 75%. So we're already rolling on that. Um, we do have an election. The only thing we have going on right now, no active wars. Uh, the only conflict we have going on right now is an election in six Andromeda as we kind of climb up to take control of that system. And I know a, I saw a couple of people in Discord tonight talking about they were already over there working on some of that, so that should be well under control. Uh, again, the one of the wars we won over the weekend was taking the final large orbital in V640. So we're basically done shuffling assets around in that system. We are free to increase our influence. Expand wildly? Well, it's a 10 billion population system, so nothing is going to happen wildly in there. But we're free you to... say that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, because after all of the fighting we've been doing, we're hovering around the mid-20s, and we're free to push ourselves up into the 50s and 60s and take some of that population and kind of settle that down. But at the same time, our problem child faction in that system, BD-52, uh, has gone to war with one of the local system, one of the local factions in there. And we would like, you know, very deeply for everybody to help BD-52 lose that war so we can push them down even further because they seem to be that unsinkable rubber ducky that just <laughs> keeps mysteriously gaining influence in the background. They're federal, right? Uh, actually, I don't know what they are. I think BD-52 may be independent. But it's been a oh, while okay. since I looked. Um, but there were they well, are federal. They are federal. There you go. Which may well, have something to do with it. I suspect yeah. my suspicions. Yes, mm. I suspect your suspicions are suspectfully correct. Uh, and we have we have FedNet commerce bots to blame for that, more than likely. But I digress. But everything we just covered, Excellent, FDev. Yeah. Right. Holding my breath for that because we're going to talk about Fed, Fed Def's ability to fix things later. <laughs> <laughs> um, every everything we just talked about is explained in a lot more detail in the standing order channel on the Discord. And of course, if anybody has any questions about that, hate or I, since we seem to be taking shifts these days, uh, will be more than happy to talk about BGS in the channel of your choice. <laughs> oh really? You talk about it anyway. It's just free. We, well, I mean, we we have a questions channel and we have a loose yep. screws faction channel, which is where we would like those questions to go. But if you ask it somewhere else about the BGS, yeah. you'll summon one of us and we'll answer it. Yeah, I mean that's the basic rules of Discord, right? Is like put things where they belong, but ultimately in our Discord, things happen in various channels. And the worst thing that's going to happen if you put something in the wrong channel is it's going to get scrolled off because you're you're probably putting something in general when it belongs in a specific channel, and then other conversations are, are going to scroll it off and you'll miss your replies and stuff. But hey, or or won't get full engagement because people won't it won't stick around long enough for people to see. We're right. just going to get mad at you. Just ask your questions, man. It's all good. We're uh, here for, for reference, you. in our Discord channel, I've put in 11,179 text messages. And I'm <laughs> sure that way more than 50% of that was BGS. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for the update. Win, 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 win. Uh, so next we should probably get into Galnet. Who's my Galnet monkey tonight? Oh shit! I think it's Dubs. Is that me? Uh, it's oh, Dubs. No. Yep. There's so Let's much exciting things. I He's mean, flinging his poop. He's flinging his poop. Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's start. <laughs> One week ago on the 16th. All right, Salvation made a call. He said the Thargoids were going to fuck around in Cornsar, and boy, did they shot. ever find out! All right, so the Thargoids invaded Kornsar. We went in there. We kicked their ass. So now, everybody that helped, and actually, whoever de whoever delivered the medicines, that's the more important thing. Delivering the, the secret mission. Supposedly medicines. I don't know. They were called medicines. 
deliver those from the mega ship to the rescue ship, you can now collect your super duper Goss cannon, which I think should be renamed to the single clap from the mega ship <laughs> in the new system that you got yourself a uh, cool little permit for. But it's specifically uh, not single. I mean, if your damage output is what some people are getting, it is a single clap. <laughs> one. Well, that's that's a oh that's a bug. But anyway, I've yes. I've tried the real one. I Have you tried didn't, it yet? I I didn't get the bug. I mean, it still kicks ass. Like I just murdered a wing of three in my cobra, uh, with it. So it's no. I just I just meant I tried out the real module. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I tried the module out. Mine is not bugged. Mine does what I assume it's supposed to do, which is a cool little four round burst. Uh, yeah. and the distributor draw is not as bad as I thought it was. It's a badass module. I actually really like it, and I'm glad that I got it. I wish I could get more, but we'll see yeah. if those get released through Tech Brokers in a future update or however. Yeah, they that goes. said it's they said it's available, so I think it is going to come around to the Tech Broker. Yeah. Um, I don't. The question is, is it going to be? Well, I guess it would be Guardian Tech Broker. It's um, stats wise, like if you if you compare the stats page, and I linked to a thread where they had a screen cap of it, so that's in the show notes. Um, but I also compared. Um, just on my own, uh, the distributor draw, power draw, and everything is the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, so. it, it, it's just, it's extra damage. It's, it's a little bit of extra heat, although the heat builds up instead yeah. of in one burst, it builds up you know, over four smaller hits. It's, yeah. it's a little bit more heat um, and a lot, lot, lot more damage. Like, it's shocking, like, the amount of damage. Increase. No, yeah, the thing is badass. Like I've just been playing around with it on my ship while y'all were chatting earlier. But uh, it's anyways, almost as high damage to to say four Goss shots, four true Goss shots. It's almost that much damage, but it's also got four hundred ammo instead of eighty. So yeah. it's it's a massive it's upgrade over the regular better Goss cannon. In basically every way, which yeah. makes me worry a little bit. If they're gonna hand us this, what's coming next? to combat it like what are the thargoids about to get what are their yeah. tech brokers about to unlock <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'd like to know yeah, but uh exactly. yeah so that, that's it for that article that piece of the article that actually covers a future article but whatever uh next yeah. article uh apparently hudson and grom are arguing over who gets to control the delta bavana system through influencing the controlling faction uh i don't believe anybody gives a shit uh i certainly don't <laughs> Uh, moving on, uh, the Duvals are having a baby again. I don't care. Uh, that sounds like the Empire's problem. Uh, all right, wait now. now it's, onto some it's, more. It's Hadrian Duval. It's the oh, Hadrian, it's the Emperor's guy. illegitimate grandchild having a legitimate child. Are those another is that the royal person, couple that or is that the royal it, couple that that uh, relinquished the throne and moved to America? Yeah, uh, it yeah. might. Yeah. It might be the one that thinking about. Yeah, yeah. It and then had an interview with the robot of Oprah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool things happening somewhere in the Empire that aren't. I hope they're not going to affect anything. I don't know. They said the Galnet was supposed to be relevant to things happening in the galaxy, so we'll see. I'm probably still not going to care. Uh, next, Salvation takes credit for absolutely wrecking the Thargoid shit in Kornsar. Uh, it's kind of hard to argue with his claims because, I mean, it's not like anybody else did it. I mean, yeah, we killed a couple, but, I mean, the aftermath was – it was, it was big. one they, morning, and they're all gone. Yeah. They, they are yeah. either DED or gone. So they're not there anymore, and he said he did it. So we have no choice yeah. but to believe him for now. So we'll see how that develops. The ships are all crashed on the surface. Yep. With what appear to be new textures, but I didn't find anything else interesting there. So. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, and then today kicks off a new event. Sal Kruger wants us to find Earth-like worlds. So they said that all uh, all data is valuable, but you know, more importantly, find some Earth-like worlds. Alongside that, go you ahead, that, man. All data is valuable. All all data is yeah. valuable. You all matter. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, do some exploring, find yourself some unique Earth-like worlds. I'm sure. If you just buzz around the bubble, maybe you'll get credit, but don't do that. That's stupid. Go find your own. Uh, submit the info. I don't know the station off the top of my head, but it's okay. too easy to find that. Yeah, so they're, they're right. You can find the the community goal thing just in your missions panel. Yeah, for yeah, one yeah. Thing. But, um, but on there's top an of additional... That, yes, okay, go yes. ahead. So while you're there, 
snap some really cool screenshots of not only the Earth-like world, but if there's other cool things in the same system that would make that system unique and a reason for tourists to go visit it, you know, those are things you need to capture and submit them to a forum for your chance to have a tourist beacon placed in that system, giving you credit for the find. So I would say ringed Earth-like worlds would be a really cool thing. And I say that yes. because Chig still doesn't have one, but I do. <laughs> Neither does Tom. So. <laughs> yeah. So they, I might they, they want unpopulated systems as well. So I, I I'm thinking the the earth the ringed earth like world that I found that my name is on, I'm probably gonna fly my happy ass out there and I'm gonna take some screenshots and I'm gonna rub it Chig's face because he doesn't have one. <laughs> and I'm gonna submit them and we'll see where that goes. Uh Art. but that 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 appears to be everything for Gownet from this last seven days, unless anyone else has something to throw in on top of it. Are they increasing the payout for exploration data, or are they just collecting it? They're just collecting it. I don't know. There the, might be the, an increased payout. I, it's, yeah, the um, the text on the... Well, I read it on Inara. I'm assuming they copied the text. says yeah. that Saud Kruger is paying handsomely for all data, but are paying triple for Earth-like worlds. So it's they're ah. probably like, you're turning in your Cardo data and it's normal, but you're getting paid triple for the Earth-likes within it. Uh, and then, of course, the screenshot contest is sort of a, a separate kind of an out of game extra thing. game oh. thing, yeah. Because for those of us... Mapped Earth-like worlds will be three times as useful, maybe even credit-wise. <laughs> I think I think that's what the, I think they're meaning. Yeah, yeah we're paying you triple because they're three <laughs> times as useful. <laughs> if 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 all of this stuff is supposed to play into the storyline, why are they so worried about finding new unpopulated Earth-like worlds so soon after a Thargoid attack? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Fdev, hmm. what do you have planned? <laughs> and you know, for for those of us who have never quite finished off Elite in exploration a good chance to go and knock it out oh yeah yeah don't don't it's all about use that money. spanch go find your own <laughs> oh go find your own yeah i mean <laughs> you can use spanch if you want but uh you know you're not the only one out there so if you're trying right. to get your name actually on one the cool kids yeah. are going to be taken off in all sorts of directions and of course chig is seventy thousand light years away with all that data oh yeah but how many the... but how much of that is ringed earth like world's chig that's what i want to know <laughs> uh he, do you suppose he's probably too f so far off that he can't even participate if he hustles he could make it home it depends on yeah it depends it on how committed he is is so where is the the turn in station is it in colonia uh i thought it was sort of far off this uh, mist uh should be near imperial space oh okay Okay, so in the bubble, anyway. Yeah, so it's I'm only totally 200 wrong. light years from comma. Oh, there you go. Frig. Frig. Okay. Does that bring us up to date? Yes, that, that does. Sweet. Thanks. All right. So there's also just, just, just boatloads of out-of-game, in-game news. Um, let's start with Dr. K. Ross. Uh, posted on Twitter this week. Uh, let's see. So it says, usually these posts come closer to the date, but I didn't want to make an out-of-the-blue post, which might be a little shock for ED fans. It's nothing to worry about, though. In roughly a month, after over 8.5 years on the project, I'll be moving on from ED and Frontier. So, Dr. Sad. K. Ross, yeah, the uh, often largely credited with being the essentially the architect of our galaxy simulation although she is always quick to mention that she works as part of a team um but obviously uh, a, a big person and personality on that team uh, is moving on so I, I said something earlier about maybe for real this time because a similar announcement mm -hmm. had come uh last year and then was retracted um well for reasons that we shouldn't probably this is like too much about, but 
this is like the third time she's done this, right? Oh, really? Like, oh, yeah. Because I, I, I want to say she did this. Like she was actually planning to leave, and there were some medical reasons around it. Oh, okay. And um, God, I can't remember when that was. Uh, but it was like mm. right as the podcast was first starting is when that was happening. And then oh, she, okay. uh, uh, she had that surgery. And then after she had that surgery, um, she decided to stay. And then last year, right around COVID happening, she said, Hey, I'm out. And then she retracted that. All right. I don't think she actually ever said she was out. I think it was just rumored. And then now oh, she's, really? okay. yeah, I, I I can't remember how it all went, but yeah, you get the idea. Yeah, it seems like it was, yeah, it was retracted. So for, for whatever reason, decided to stay. We, and anyway, so, um, yeah, I, I thought she was always a, a nice voice to have when she was able to come on to streams and stuff like that. Um, and she does plenty of her own Twitch streaming for those who want to continue following her. She's a very interesting mm-hmm. person and uh, always kind of cool to to see and hear and so on and so forth. She'll be missed for sure. Yes, she I always thought it was I always thought it was cool that there was an actual and there probably is more people who have PhDs working on the program. I don't know, but I mean, she's an actual astrophysicist or astronomer. Yep. She's an actual scientist that was working on a video game. Th- so, yeah, I believe she is a physicist with a with a background in in game uh, development right. as well. So it's like a, a perfect cross section. Yeah, intersection this intersection game, so. is definitely what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it basically be like getting a paleontologist to work on a Jurassic Park game or something like that, you like know? Jurassic I, World Evolution, for example. <laughs> oh, good segue. Good seg. Good segue. But anyway, <laughs> we talked about that game. <laughs> Is it a reverse segue, though? Because didn't you talk about that game like last week? Did she? I can't remember. No, you did. I probably did. Shit. I talked about all kinds of crazy shit. You're like, I was playing that Jurassic World shit and it's banging. Damn. I no, think that's I what you said. I think that's a direct verbatim quote. That's exactly I how you talk. I mean, I mean, you're you're not wrong. That is how I talk, but I don't remember saying that. So, <laughs> oh, I just crashed into my carrier. Damn! Oh, oh, see, that's, that's what you get. Time. That's what you get. <laughs> I was talking about dinosaurs. <laughs> what you get, man? Talking shit about me right. <laughs> for the for the game's sake. Hopefully, they've been able to, you know, have somebody shadow her and learn. Yeah, and pass that institutional knowledge along. So that's that's a yeah. long time to be working on something. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot that's not written down. I'm sure. I've never been so hopeful that someone's professions, uh, pro- uh, professing uh, to not get all the credit, is true. Yes. Does that make sense? That was a extremely, extremely mm. rough way of saying that, but it, like, it made sense. I, I, you know. She was obviously like a massive presence to have. She'll be missed. And I really, really hope that she's absolutely telling the truth that she works on a team and that the game won't won't uh, suffer because of it. So, uh, yeah, and good it, luck. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I'll say is that um, I don't think it's such a bad idea to move people around on projects sometimes. So, because mm-hmm. then you get some different ideas. So I don't think it's such a bad idea that maybe we get some... Because I mean, not everybody can know everything, and there's different approaches yeah. to do di- to do different things. So, I don't think it's necessarily such a bad idea that someone else, you know, head up the Stellar Forge for lack of a better way to put it. You know, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. mean, we might. I mean, that's nothing against you know her work. She did good work, but yeah, yeah. Somebody Maybe. may approach it with a completely with a completely different mindset to it, and that may be better. And yeah, it may be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be All honest. Right. You know? I was, I was trying to be positive, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, we might end right. with Hello Kitty Adventure Island for all we know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All the best to Dr. K. Ross in future endeavors. Uh, on to the next thing. So um, there was a previous uh, challenge contest uh, put out. Uh, even earlier this past week, and that was the eSports Stunt Challenge, uh, which is going to earn 
all of the everyone gets a ribbon in this one, guys. Uh, all participants are going to receive an SRV paint job. It's the pulse blue. It's one of those with like bright lights all over it. Uh, so the idea here is, and I'm going to make sure I get the details correct by actually calling this up. Uh, but they want you to record a stunt, a stunt, any stunt, as long as it contains only in-game footage, actual gameplay footage, uh, and just from anything, on foot, SRV, in the ship, whatever you want that's a cool stunt. Um, should be 16 by 9 resolution, 1080p uh, at a minimum, t- uh, between 10 and 30 seconds long, and you gotta you got to be something performed in the SRV ship or on foot, or any combination. Uh, only in-game footage, no copyrighted audio, no voiceover or added text. Uh, get them in by September 30th. You have seven more days. Uh, and they are going to be putting together a video about this. Um, so you may get featured on stream when they show them off. Uh, but they did clarify that everybody who submits a, a qualifying video is going to get that paint job. So um, notes, uh, check the show notes for the link, and there's the email address where you need to send them a YouTube link to your video. We need to go dig up that uh, Alec Turner video of him jumping on top of the damn Thargoid. (laughs) (laughs) He may have already submitted it. (laughs) Submitted for him. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah. He's he's a little modest, so... (laughs) if if Alec is not in the official compilation video, they've made a mistake. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he just did yeah. something wild last week. The guy's unstoppable. Oh, I missed. I have. I'm behind on his stuff. So, what did he do last? I'll. You know what? Never mind. We can talk about uh, well, it later. Well, there was there was something that uh, he was doing for another event of some kind and created essentially an SRV obstacle course at some particular settlement. And he basically played the ground as lava and jumped all around this massive settlement without ever touching the ground. Uh, just from building to building, and in an SRV, uh, in an SRV, yeah, yeah. Wow, <laughs> I don't even know how the hell you do that. <laughs> it's, it's it well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I for for myself, I I hopped on and and recorded a, a mail slot thing for him. I did a uh, blind backwards through the slot in the mamba and then straight back out shot. Nice. And it fit exactly in 30 seconds. 30 seconds is very short, <laughs> is what I discovered when I was trying to do this. Especially in elite. Uh, you know, in elite I might still have something for this. Uh, when I was coming into the station as my part of the 0% Hall Club, with no shields on a Diamondback Scout, I recorded the flipping through as Data attempted to murder me. <laughs> <laughs> was that the one? As long as you can trim the voice out of it. Uh, if there is voice in it, I should be able to. Was that the one where you drifted through sideways? Yes, I. Yeah, it. Something like that. I'll have to find it. Something like that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Bonus is it points time to get... he... I'm, I keep interrupting, man. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. No, no, no sorry. <laughs> I I just want to say uh, I think Dub should need to do one involving tons of slaves. So. <laughs> oh yeah, flyover. So you need so to, many. You need, how would you fit this into thirty seconds? Right. So you got to load up the cutter with slaves. You got to look right, see that they're slaves, and then cut to external camera just as we jettison all cargo. <laughs> we can get that all into thirty seconds. Totally. Right over a star. <laughs> Some creative editing. No, over a ground CZ. Yeah, over right, exactly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Find a war zone somewhere. Oh no, no, that little, that little opening. The little opening in the top of the Thargoid structure where there's like a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Feed your Thargoids. <laughs> Here, my babies, feast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I saw you guys are always interested in escape pods. I thought you might like some live ones, some fresh ones. Very hard workers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, is it time to get into the business here? So um, nobody's saying anything, so I'm going to assume sure. that the answer is yes. So uh, update seven, it it came. It came on Wednesday. And uh, let's get the quick part out of the way. It also came along with a Horizons quality of life update, uh, which we were told was going to contain <laughs> at least the... Um, increased module storage and increased bookmarks, which I was very excited about. And I thought, oh, that's great. And they, they weren't going to tell us ahead of time what else was in it because they weren't quite sure everything that was going to make it in there. And 
But, uh, you know, quality of life, just bringing things along that had been added since Odyssey and just kind of keeping a little bit more quality of life parity. So I was rather excited as a uh, uh, non, uh, non-Odyssey non player. And um, huge snore, huge snore. Uh, it contained those two quality of life updates that were already announced and all of the teases that there's other stuff in there that we would... Uh, that that they'll announce as soon as they can, uh, we're for not because everything else is just sort of like visual geometry bug fixes to do with various uh, stations and stuff around the galaxy and a couple of text problems and things like that. Um, I guess we did also get the Thargoid heart bug thing because that's sort of a game code issue and isn't specific to Horizons or Odyssey. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm bummed, you know, like we couldn't get a few basic quality of life things off the top of my head that could have been in there. Like, what about the shield percentage? What about wing beacons defaulting to on instead of off? Um, just, just, just crazy talk. Yeah, that's that's nuts. So anyway, that that's not, nothing happened. Uh, so anyway, uh, wah, but wah, was wah. The, the big old update seven happened. Uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you think of that their update? I mean, they can never again claim that they don't have a spaghetti code problem. <laughs> so, for, first of all, um, what do you like about the update? What, what's, what's in there that, that you're excited about? What's in there that, that works well? The conflict zones seem to be sort of a major, major point was adding much more combined arms that we were supposed to have from the right. beginning, right? And there Anybody were some... Tried it out? And there were some important bug fixes too, especially for um, space-based combat zones. They appear to have eliminated the, I don't even want to call it a bug, but the oversight where ship lost fi- ship launched fighter deaths counted as a ship kill for progressing. Oh, okay. they, they appear, mm-hmm. but in typical FDEV fashion, they didn't come out and say that. They just kind of hinted around the edges and I guess we're actually going to have to go out and experiment and see if they actually fixed it. But it appears they okay. may have fixed that. Yeah, and there was another one about um, the uh, reverse allocation of bonds, essentially, from like the um, right. captain kills and stuff. I've gotten that so many times where I have like oh. 50,000 credits for the yeah. other team at the end of a CZ for some reason. Yeah. So I guess that's, that's fixed. And I, I haven't, of course, I, I don't log on to Horizon. I mean, on to... Odyssey, even though I have it, but I, I like where they're headed with the ground CCs, and I'd be interested to to hear kind of what people who've been playing them think about it, because it sounds like they're headed in the right direction. Yeah, I've heard good things. I haven't tried them yet, but... Yeah, sounds, so as we record this, it's only been um, about 24 hours since anybody's been able to play it um, at all, so... Um, should we run down the list a little bit here? Uh, that's a big list. Mm. It's, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It, it is a, a long, long list. Um, oh, I just opened the other thing. Oh, hold on. Save that. Save that. Here we go. Update seven notes. Um, okay, so I don't know. What? See, so the thing is like, I, I don't want to dig into it cause I don't, I don't have Odyssey, right? So I don't want to be the one who's picking out like what's important in this list. I, I kind of don't really know what's important in the list. Taxi redirection oh. will be nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, little thing, but that's nice. What What is? I kind of understand this F A M D F S R, but they say specifically A M D CAS has been re-added and is exclusive to F S R. Sure. Let me. Just I never that. knew what the difference was. Uh. So. Um, All you need to know is that it's good. I have it on. <laughs> it's a contrast adaptive sharpening is what CAS is. It's, so mm-hmm. it's a specific aspect of the... Uh, so Fidelity FX is the upscaling. Um, ca- contrast adaptive sharpening provides a mixed ability to sharpen and occasionally scale an image. So it's a different style of scaling that that looks different and probably performs different. Um. It's designed to help increase the quality of existing temporal anti-aliasing. So this is uh, when anti-aliasing is considering more than one frame. 
of the game image. So uh, typically prevents the shimmering that happens because the uh, anti-aliasing will will predict across like three frames, frame ahead and frame back. Um, so anyway, yeah. So that that I think is independent now in the game from. Uh, yeah, mutually exclusive to FSR. So that's the fidelity super resolution. I don't know. I I, I saw Apoc talking about it in Discord and seemed to have the impression he, he seemed to be saying that it, it made things look worse or like hmm. whatever the adaption of it, like did it... So I see here it says it's been re-added. So they added it and then did they take it away for some reason? I guess so. I think it was uh, I, inadvertently removed in an update. Okay. Um, APOC 5 uh, from the... His, <laughs> I need to pl- I'm talking about him. I need to plug his podcast. Uh, Elite, Elite Comps, comps Check. check. Yeah. Elite Comps Check. Uh, check it out. Get it in you. Uh, APOC was sharing some screenshots. He felt like it was there was some weird graphical things that didn't look as good after the update seven, and he was blaming this new implementation of AMD CAS. Uh, and side by side, on and off, it definitely looked. I agreed, lower quality with it on, but I think it it is a form of upscaling, right? So I think the resolution does lower when you use it or something. So I don't know if that's we should just accept that or I, I don't I don't really know because I haven't had my hands on it. Yeah, I haven't been, I haven't been on the ground or in a station to see how how it looks how it acts since the update. Uh, so let's see further down. So we talked about the Thargoid heart bug. This is supposedly fixed. Um, I feel like we would have heard. Well, I don't know. Maybe this will take more time to hear if it's finally really really fixed, but. Um, the reason that they thought it was happening w- did seem to align with AXI's own research about when it happens and their uh, th- hypotheses for why it would happen. Um, so hopefully it is correctly done. So the, the language is an issue has been fixed with how damage is applied to Thargoids. In order to fix the Thargoid, hearts becoming invincible. Damage was being applied to the local space of the Thargoid, but each client was rotating the Thargoid locally, mm. like each player's personal session of the game. So it would have hearts in different places. So which one was vulnerable was different for different players. Uh, and anyway, so that seems to be fixed. Why would you do that from a coding standpoint? Well, it must not have been intentional, right? I don't know. De- deciding no, no. where the orientation of your enemy takes place in a multiplayer game is an intentional decision. Okay, yeah. but here's the thing on this, right? We, it, to me, this does not explain why it was happening in single player mode. That was like going to be my next question. Itself. So was it? I I don't know for sure. I've never had it happen to me, but I'm pretty sure I've read that this was happening in single player mode. So everything I had read was um, AXI had said that it is most likely to happen. I don't know if they said it never happens when you're alone, but uh, it is most likely to happen when you are in a wing when. And it happens when somebody else joins the instance. And so their running theory was that when another player joins the instance, the game reshuffles or rotates or however you want to think of it, which player is sort of in charge of the instance, which player is which computer is the boss of the instance. And that causes which heart is vulnerable to rotate, but not update visually. Like it rotates in the background. Uh, so that some of that language sort of lines up with what they said. Mm-hmm. Um, because so all of the logs that AXI was examining um, seemed to show that it, it uh, had to do with different players, especially when they're far away. And that's another thing that FDEV said was that it was like different time zones and different countries and stuff like that. If you have that going on in the same wing, you're more likely to have it. Now, I mean, we 
had a wing with all, uh, we were all within one time zone of each other, but we're all in the United States. And we definitely got a few invincible hearts that night. It's also tough because like they don't stay invincible. They retract and then you hit the Thargoid a few more times and they come back out and then you kill them. Because by then it's back to being the same on everyone's local session to use their language. Um, so I, I don't know. I'd never heard that it happens when you're by yourself. But I don't know. It, it's been a long time since I read about it, but I, I it seems like I can remember people saying that it would happen solo, but it's it's far more rare when it was solo. And I guess you could argue mm-hmm. that, you know, even though your computer is the server, it still does, you know, report into FDev server at, at some level. I guess you could argue, well, maybe it's still spinning it, you know, yeah. out of sync with you. Um, I, I, I don't <laughs> out know. Out of sync with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, out of sync with the server is a better way to put it. But Yeah. Yeah. And, and it kind of makes sense to me. Um, like from what I remember reading about the AXI findings and FDEV, um, man, you know, to be honest with you, this is like one of those bugs that have been there to my knowledge ever since they introduced Thargoids. And yeah, I don't think it's ever not been there. Yeah. It, it seems like they, they keep throwing things at it to fix it and they keep missing. So I really hope yeah. it's fixed this time, but I don't I honestly don't have a whole hell of a lot of hope because they keep, it honestly feels like they just keep trying and keep failing. Um, and, and, and honestly, um, this also goes back to, I don't know if it's such a bad idea for as, as, as unique of the way that they do server and client side stuff in this game. And don't get me wrong, I do think that it's a very unique way to do it because it's kind of you're utilizing the power of everybody's computer and that's pretty cool. But I think we're I think that this is a good example of a time when it's a bad idea. And I I almost I kind of wish they would just go to, for lack of a better term, a dedicated server. So because I feel like if they did that, we wouldn't have this problem. Because out there would inst- the server would dictate where the rotation is, and be like, okay, this is where it is. It's at twelve o'clock. It's at six o'clock. Whatever. Yeah. Well, well, okay. So, but if you were going to have a dedicated server for a global game like that, you'd have to have split servers, right? So, for well, us all to exist in the same galaxy, well, because you wouldn't get the the proper, you would have latency issues. You can't. Right. So in order to um, do that correctly, you'd have to have separated servers for different regions, um, which means that's going to turn out like a bunch of other MMOs where it's like, oh, which server is your character on? Or maybe the characters are persistent across the servers, but you can only be connected to one at a time. Or you create some kind of all the, you know previously unheard of way of connecting and interfacing all those servers but there your latency is definitely back now we're essentially like the servers are a bunch of modems and now you've got like mo- you know modulation lag and mm-hmm. uh i don't know that that sounds like a, a a bit of a mess i just think that the it, style w- what happens in this game like the style of the game being everyone's in this persistent universe and it's supposed to be the same universe even if we can't obviously like can't have like 60 people in in one particular instance but so much of the game also doesn't need quick quick fast dedicated server stuff right like each star system is its own instance and then the normal space instances get created ad hoc within that star system so it's kind of it would be crazy to try to do it another way because almost all like so much of the game doesn't even make use of any of those features, right? And then you'd so you'd be dealing with all these headaches for not much benefit, right? For benefit only in specific situations. Uh, I think I just sent myself out on a on a rant. Well, it, it's it's you know I my argument there would be uh, I'm playing uh, or I have the ability to to play Call of Duty with people in China. So if uh, and Call Call of Duty isn't Call of Duty peer to peer, not the okay. Warzone is a better way to put it. 
Oh, I don't know about Warzone. Yeah, War, Warzone Warzone is dedicated servers now. Modern Warfare had dedicated servers. But those are servers. separate dedicated servers, right? Mm, I mean, when you when you join, I, the way I understand it, the way it works is that uh, a person in China joins that dedicated that server farm, and I join the California server farm, and then the two server farms actually talk to each other. So, and you're able to play like reflex. I mean, yeah, level gaming that way. Yeah. Hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There probably is some lag that I don't, you don't, you don't really notice is there. I mean, without yeah. a doubt, every now and then you do notice it. But uh, if you could play a, a Twitch-based game with someone in China, and you know you kill yeah. them or they kill you effectively, uh, I think that this game could pull it off. But that being said, I don't necessarily dislike the way that they do the server stuff because uh, you know, I've read about it and I've been told about it and it's actually really interesting the way they do it. Uh, and I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail because I'm probably going to talk out my books. I can't remember a lot of it right now, okay. but there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good, a lot, a lot of good. All that to say, I do kind of wish they had, I don't want to say an option. I do kind of wish for things like that. It would be nice if everybody could be on the same box. So, yeah. Yeah, there are times when it would be advantageous, it seems. Um, well, the most, any other, the, any other the juicy most exciting, stuff you want to pick out? The most exciting thing I've seen in the update is they have allegedly f fixed the occurrence of, you know, when you would have to chase down a, a target or uh, talk to the informant. To find your target, yes, and they would drop out yeah. too close to the star. They say they fixed that. That was so annoying. <laughs> that happened. was so annoying. It just made me especially quit playing when it's the a game. really, really yeah. juicy assassination mission. You're like, I want my modified embedded firmware. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm overheating and blowing up trying to find <laughs> this informant. So hopefully that fix works. That's that's what's got me the most excited out of this whole list, I think. <laughs> Wait, did that one not pass? I don't I didn't see that in the horizon update. Another one that yeah. I don't get to <laughs> Thanks a lot. A, a bug from wah, Horizons wah. that they don't fix in Horizons. <laughs> well, they gotta they gotta hang that carrot out there. Hey, yeah. your commissions can actually Let's be completed in yeah. Odyssey. Hold on, let me check again. Uh, upgrade for bug fixes. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. On the horizons. Um, the Avengers would clip through the ground and Thargoid sites and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I'll throw this in here. The... Yeah, I don't see it. Intermittent hang on. Intermittent hang on exiting the game. By the way, first time I got that bug was like... Wednesday morning, right before the. <laughs> it's the only time I ever had the black screen upon exiting the game. I got um, it all the time around when it started happening, I think, but it stopped okay. after they said they fixed it one of these yeah. past, past times. I, I think mine was random because this is Horizons, right? And I, I don't know. I don't know if it was even affecting us. How, how can you mess uh, up okay. closing a game? <laughs> <laughs> like the, um, the power play change. So there's been a change implemented to power play. The process where control of a star system is lost by revolt now correctly accounts for income already provided to the competing control systems. Now, I don't really get what that means, I but don't know apparently what that means. The, the background of like the points that you earn for having a system a, a, a in, in your power uh, was wrongly giving you money, f or not money, but you know, wrongly awarding those CC points to um, uh, uh, for systems that were no longer technically in your control because they were like, what do you call them? You know, revolt. They're in, in states where they shouldn't be, essentially counting as your power anymore. So, right. Um, and then there was. Uh, some income values have been updated for many control systems so that the sum of their own income plus all the systems they currently exploit. Um, Can anyone explain what they use that command capital for? Does anyone know enough? 
give any explanation. Because that's uh, the income they're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Command capital. It's, it's the income that they use to like take over new control systems and junk like that. It's like their political so it, capital. It who's in charge. To, yeah. Okay. Interesting. I've learned so, something. Tonight. Yeah. So a rebalance of them because they weren't correctly summing when different conditions were happening or something to that effect. And so, I, I um, think part of that was when you had exploited systems that were exploited by more than one control system. Each uh, control system was getting their income because, and I, somebody so was multiplying it. Well, it was adding it more than one to more than one control system. So yeah. And someone who knows more than about power play than I do needs to correct me on this because I am winging it with my limited knowledge of power play. But I think that was going <laughs> on. And they yeah. somewhere they put out a table of a list of about 20 control systems that were going to lose a handful of of CC points based on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If um, Colin Ford wasn't surely asleep right now, I'd ask him. I'll just wait till Tuesday and see what they say on Lave. There you Answer go. Answer my questions for me, guys. Uh, okay. Uh, what? What's another another word of note from the update? Anybody? Anybody at all? What's exciting? Hmm. Because otherwise, we're about to become a bummer. We might as well get this over with. And rip this bandit off. So. Rip it. <laughs> FDF giveth and FDF taketh away, or do they give in again in this case? At, at the same time. At the same time. Apparently there's a number of day one bugs with the new patch, uh, but the most exciting and most talked about seems to be something to do with weapon engineering that is uh, some some value in the code is sometimes multiplying wrong. So Very wrong. Very wrong. It apparently, it can happen or not happen every time you log in. So people are finding that they just menu log for a while, and eventually one of their weapons will show ridiculous, unbelievable, off the chart damage, like like in the nine quintillions for a yeah. plasma accelerator round. And yeah, okay. So Data's just put a, a screen cap in the channel of the. Guardian Goss Cannon with uh, doing damage that's like twenty digits long, <laughs> and it and on when you look in your right hand panel on your modules, it just shows an infinity sign for the damage. <laughs> it doesn't fit. Infinity. I'm surprised. I'm surprised it actually does that. They have it coded yeah. for an infinity yeah. sign. I that's have funny. Infinite damage, and yeah. I can confirm it works. <laughs> <laughs> so the word is, uh, in, uh, the uh, Art said on the stream today that they're obviously they're working on a hot fix. He's hoping that that will deploy tomorrow. Um, I think there are something like four or five bugs that are hoping to be patched. I don't actually know what the other ones are off the top of my head, but this seems to be the big one. But yeah, I saw a quick video somebody shared of uh, dropping in. I mean, this the damage is so off the charts that Ordinary weapons, non-guardian weapons, can hurt Thargoids because it, it way bypasses their uh, nine percent damage I think, resistance. I think hurt is an understatement. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a video of somebody dropping in with um, some ship, just a Viper or a something, viper. Yeah. To, to a Hydra, the most <laughs> powerful Thargoid, and then just firing one plasma round and watching that guy blow up. Poof. Well, and, and er, earlier in, in general chat on our Discord, uh, APOC did the math on this. And the, you know, the nine quintillion damage, whatever it is, even with 99.99% damage resistance, the remaining <laughs> damage is still like 9.2 trillion damage. <laughs> <laughs> even, even at 99.99, it's still a one shot clap. <laughs> Yep, that's funny. Oh, uh, I also saw in part of that conversation, um, Awan turned up and was talking about something back in the day 
where apparently this happened in some previous update to the thrusters of the Type Nine. Awesome. Where yes. uh, it, it like in some in certain directions or something, its multiplier was so wrong, and if you like boosted, you would like leave the galaxy or yeah. something. To that. That's how you said speed. it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, he, they went plaid. Going plaid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> plaid. Uh, and even just like he had showed a video of like just like using your thrusters to spin around, you're going some insane yeah. speed. <laughs> right. That was awesome. So the, the, the question with this plasma update is, we, so we know we can one-shot clap a Hydra. So basically mm-hmm. anything with hit points dies in one shot. So now I'm waiting for the videos where we confirm whether or not mega ships have hit points, space stations yeah. have hit points, uh-huh. and planets have hit points. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I mean, I think we know they don't, but let's, and you know. For science, somebody for needs moment. to test it. For science, start shoot, somebody, somebody try to shoot down uh, Jameson's memorial. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and it's it was originally listed as a, a bug with plasma accelerators, but clearly it's happening to all kinds of different weapons. And uh, this is all happening before I got up. I woke up this morning to the announcement from AXI saying, we're not counting any of your kills. Yeah, nice try. <laughs> because of this bug. Nice try, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, d- is there anything else you guys want to call out about the update? That That's that's it. I mean, this is a this is a big episode filled with stuff, but if we're not going to list out every single thing on that... <laughs> On that update, I kind though. of hope that just, plasma accelerator bug uh, doesn't get fixed <laughs> until Monday. Oh yeah. yeah, I hope it lingers. You putting and, on some money? Just insert I, in here. Uh, sorry, go on. I, I really want a fleet carrier <laughs> <laughs> and, and some extra money to sit on. Just another bug that I wish was happening in Horizons. Just insert uh, Microsoft Sam reading that forum post with all the updates listed in it right now. Uh, okay. Wait, <laughs> hold on. Uh, wait, where is it? Uh, let's do this. Let's do, uh, show this panel. This is how it gets made. Everybody. Uh, let's see. Oh my God. He's going to actually do it. No, don't. Fixes, fixes for, for multiple, multiple typos, typos throughout, throughout the, game the game in general, general have been addressed. addressed. Is that working? Can you guys hear it's him talking? Double. Yeah, it's it was interesting. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me try. To, let's see how long, how big a thing I can copy in here. I think I hit the wrong button. That's why it doubled. Uh, Overlapping text in the commander stats UI yes. has been fixed. Grab your popcorn. Oh, it it only takes like one line at a time. This is irritating. I'm not. I'm not. I, I refuse to continue this charade. The charade. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um. Seriously though, any any anything else? Mm, I, I, I think know. we've covered it. No other. Weren't y'all talking about bugs with uh, CZs or influence or something like that? Or is that a prior? Or did I just mishear something oh, there was, before the show there started? Were re- there were reports on another Discord this afternoon that in, sometimes CZs would spawn without ships in them, space CZs. Mm. Uh, I have okay. not seen that, but uh, someone was saying that that had happened. And then, of course, yeah, the, the, it's, we were talking about the plasma accelerator bug, but they also screwed the pooch on several other weapons, both up and down. Some, Some lost a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Well, wonder, everything's normal here you know, in Horizons. Like I know nothing, less than nothing about making a game. But like, what's what's the difference between the environment that they build games in and what the games actually live in and get played in? You know, is something like this even noticeable? Yeah. Right. Occur, I mean, can, yeah. When it seems to be sort of like. Um, it happens sometimes when you log in and you relog, and then it doesn't happen. You relog again, and it does. Um, it's hard to imagine what. <laughs> how, how do you chase a bug like that, right? Yeah, yeah. That sucks. Because clearly, it's not like somebody put the decimal point in the wrong place, and plasma weapons now destroy mega ships. It's sometimes. So what the yeah. hell is that? What is that even? What? <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel bad about that one. 
yeah, I, I don't understand how we got to that bug, but we'll never hear anything more from from FDev. You know, they'll fix yeah. it, and never speak of it again. But it's just a, yeah, the fun ones they fix real fast, <laughs> like the like the O seven <laughs> and the this man. Come on, uh, the O seven. Yeah. <sighs> no one wasn't even hurting anybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. They, they missed a chance to monetize that. That would have been fast stacks yeah. cash. Exactly. So many chances. Don't get me started on the crap they should monetize and they don't. Yeah, we've we've had a whole show Ooh. on that actually. The the pretty <laughs> Corvettes and the ugly Corvettes. Yeah, they're all still ugly, by the way. <laughs> they they still they, they need a Thai Corvette that comes with a big honking hood ornament right in the middle. Look, man, I'll give them 40 bucks to take that shit off my damn Corvette. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you want a big Texas Longhorn on the front of your Triggered. No. Okay. If you go look at the Corvette right now, it has this great big Core Dynamics logo on the hood. And I hate it. It makes me hate my stupid... Not, beyond the paints, because the paints are awful too, but... You know the the yep. I, I I'm just saying I would give them money to take this shit off my 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 ship that I've been in for six years. Now I I do believe that one of the patch notes today was they changed the way some of the paint jobs are rendered to make them look more like the Horizons paint jobs. Yeah, I logged in. It yep. looks like shit. Okay. Well, it's so. it's that's been in like almost every patch. I think at this point, yep. there's been like some of these paint jobs have been improved to look more like Horizons or to look gonna, better or something. We're gonna fix it, guys. We're gonna fix it, and then they don't. And they break something else along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't understand it, right? Um, okay. Well. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody's screaming about the performance being a lot better, and uh, we haven't had enough time to really validate the um, conflict zone update. So I guess we're hopeful about a few things, and maybe tomorrow there'll be a bug fix, and by next week I'm sure we'll have a better idea of what what's going on and, and how we feel about conflict zones and stuff like that. So, And by we, I mean you. Uh, if there is nothing else, um, there's no chig here. Does anybody want to do any, do any non off topic nonsense like cheeses or beers or anything? I, I, I don't have popcorn? anything like that. I don't have anything like that, but Particular like they're kind of popcorn. Am I the only one that's like, like all this patch stuff? It's like, okay, this is great, but you're not talking about the stuff. I'm not used specifically, but they're not talking about the stuff that's the problems. They're just like, oh, here's a bunch of bug fixes, but we're not really... Well, aren't bugs problems? <sighs> yeah, they are, but I don't you know. Mean, you mean like they're not getting into new, like, gameplay? They're not... Like, feature of the game <sighs> stuff? They're trying to get it to where okay. it should have been at launch? Yes. Let, let me let me interpret a little bit now. So I I did watch part of the stream today. They were doing a play stream of Conflict Zones, and got to hear some of the stuff Art was saying. Uh, particularly like, yes, we know performance is kind of like the the one main issue, like the one issue that is more elevated than the rest. They're working on it. You know, that's essentially what he's saying. Like the performance is, we're making some improvements each time and. Um, I don't know, from the look of the schedule, uh, maybe update eight will have more to do with performance than seven did. Maybe it won't, I don't know. But, you know, they they know that. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I agree. I think the performance being as bad as it was for this long is abysmal and feels, feels real bad. Um, but you know, it's it's also like what what are we gonna do, right? What are we, what what are we gonna do about that? We're not gonna like take our ball and go home. I mean, are you? I sort of did, I guess. Yeah, I did. It's kind of for a different reason. It was a little bit more specific. Not really. You just elected not to play with the new ball. Yeah. It. It. And and again, that wasn't like strictly like a performance issue. That was like a company policy for a feature issue. But anyway, um, I mean, I'm definitely uh, playing playing less since Odyssey came out. Now it's some combination of 
excitement over the game and real life busyness that comes and goes. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. definitely they, part of it. Okay. I guess what I'm getting at is that they're not addressing the core issue of Odyssey. The core issue of Odyssey is not the performance, it's not the bugs. We all kind of predicted that they were going to fix mm. those things to begin with. The core issue of Odyssey is that they put out this, you know, this expansion, and guys, there's nothing to do in the expansion. All there's right, like, I'm going to. Okay, so you are talking about gameplay then. Right. I, I'm going to put the rosiest possible benefit of the doubt spin on this. They had to release the very basics of on foot and make sure that it works properly before they can add anything else. Yeah, I totally now, agree with that. But but that statement, you know, the unspoken part of that statement that's the big assumption is there is something else waiting. And we have no guarantee yeah. that that's there. But I think they they had to come out with the base model of on foot first bef- and then build everything else off of that. I would piggyback on what you said and say there additional delays because of because it's not where it needs to be performance and bugs wise. Right. Because the thing the thing that is going to be facilitated by the burr bones of on foot being in here can't come until the consoles can have it too. Right. Or it would be insane. Particularly, like, whatever this thing we're leading up to is with whatever giant thing is going to happen with the Thargoids or the story or whatever it turns out to be, if they pull that trigger and and console can't participate, there is there is no bigger yeah. PR nightmare than that. Like, yeah. the launch of Odyssey was nothing compared to the PR nightmare that I, that would be. That, and that and would- they are right... To hold it back. Yes, because that would that would not just be burning a bridge. That would be blowing it up and burying the pieces. Yeah, I'm 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 just holding out that they still have a plan because I still haven't seen a plan. Um, yeah, I don't think they have. I don't know. Um, I don't know. They, they they keep releasing these bug fixes, which are great. Don't get me wrong. I like the fact they're fixing the bugs, but we all predicted when this thing started that they were going to fix the bugs. Right, and they have no plans that we know of to fix the overlying problem, which is you don't really have a game right now. I mean, Odyssey. If you take Odyssey as a as what it is, you don't really have a game. You didn't release expansion. You released a couple of new things to go do, a couple of of new ways to play the game. You didn't really release new. You didn't release forty dollars worth of content. That's that's what I'm getting yeah, the, at. The price the price does feel wrong. Yeah. You released honestly like a fifteen, twenty dollar add on that yeah. is cool. I mean, there's things there I like, but there's nothing and you don't you haven't released a gameplay that says, Hey guys, we know we're gonna fix it. Here's our plan. Or or you don't have to like everybody says, Well, yeah. we don't we don't we don't need we don't need time frames on that. Okay, great. Give us the broad strokes. Tell us they, what features you're working on. Tell they us have, if you have a storyline that's planned, because they haven't done that. They have never communicated like that before. And while I agree with you, they need to. I, nothing in my prior experience with FDev leads me to believe they're going to start communicating like that now. But they've also never shit the bed the way they did. That's true. But, I, I, you know, part of the, the bed shitting they just did was a complete <laughs> failure to communicate. Oh, I know. So it's okay. Well, it's, so the the horizons update though says says to me this this horizons quality of life update. Every single time they mention it, they tease it like it's we know it's going to contain the um, bookmarks and and module storage increase, and we've got some other quality of life things coming that are going to trickle down from Odyssey. No, not a single one. Yeah, it's all just. Uh, little bug fixes mostly to do with geometry and text and things like that. So that's been the messaging for like three or four weeks now is it's going to be quality of life updates. We can't tell you exactly what it is, but there's going to be some some other stuff in there, not a single one. So that's what they know about messaging. You gotta and quit I don't trust, know where that fault lies. Them. You got to quit trusting them. Well, I mean, but, after, but, after the alpha, right. after the alpha yeah. branch comments, I stopped really paying yeah. attention yeah. to what they say. Yeah. But there's still, and, and but this is supposed to be like, yeah, the alpha branch stuff. That was a horrible breach of trust, saying saying what they said, uh, and then I I didn't really trust them. Then 
you know, then we started getting like, okay, now we're going to start communicating. We're going to do these dev diary things. We're going to tell you what's going on. I'm going to tell you things as soon as I can. And if I can't, if I don't have any information, I'm just going to answer the question to that. I'm not going to ignore the question. All this stuff is meant to be like, I'm shooting straight with you now. That's the message we're receiving from the CMs. And I don't know, I'm not going to lay the blame because I don't know where it is. I don't know if, uh, I, I feel like I can say with certainty that the CMs were getting screwed. I think the CMs were yeah. getting lied to and they were mm-hmm. made to look like assholes to us and they were being yeah. hung out to dry by the by the upper management. Yeah. I don't know if that's still what's going on. I don't know if Art and the rest of them were told there's going to be a Horizons QOL update. We can't tell you everything, but it's going to have some stuff in addition to this. Um, go ahead and tease that. And then they got nothing. Or if it was just their idea, if, if they're lying and, and they don't understand the difference between bug fixes and we still can't be bothered to put the, the wing beacon shit in that's made it into Odyssey. We still can't be bothered to filter that down to Horizons. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who did that. But somebody did it. Somebody did that messaging and so once again, I was disappointed, you know, we're disappointed by that because it was teased. If they just said, oh, yeah, well, obviously we have to do the module storage thing has to come to Horizons or the whole game would break. So, yeah, we're definitely doing that. And it's going to come at the same time or very close to it. We would have been like, awesome. And that would have been the end of it. Right. Yeah, because there but would instead, be no elevated expectations. Yeah. Right. Instead, and then, and then a list of like, oh, we fixed the geometry and the text on a bunch of random stuff. Oh, cool. Right. That's what would have happened, you know? <laughs> but instead, it's like, oh, you know, QOL update. Oh, this is going to be great. Who knows yeah. what I'll get? I know I'm not getting, like, the updated graphics. I, I wasn't, you know, they spent half the time uh, trying to quell the rumors that the the galaxy was getting reunified. Give me a break. Who? They, what idiot thought that was happening? What person they, that was even remotely paying attention thought that was happening? And that's what they were spending their time dispelling. Give me they've a break. Never, they have never learned... The, the basic Scotty rule, which is you cannot go wrong by under-promising and over-delivering. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> it, well, okay, well, actually, that brings me back to this stuff about gameplay content. Um, I think it's still a reasonable assumption that that is what they're, that they do know that, even if they're not using it all the time for stuff like this when they should. Um, I think... It's, I think it's very likely that there is something else there. There is some stuff going yeah. on with this story. Like this story was planned before Odyssey was a debacle. Right. And this stuff is there. And I think, I think you know, we're not the only ones who think this. It's being held back because of the schedule and it's being padded out and, and stuff like that. I think that there is something really great under there that was necessary, that had to have the on-foot stuff there. Um, I think it's going to be wild. And... If the payoff is eventually this comes to consoles and everything's reunified, and then, without any warning, somebody runs into a Thargoid on foot, and we see that crap on YouTube for the first time, we all get to experience it together like we do with some of these in-game events. Right. It's going to be wild. And if the music and the sound is as fantastic as it always is, and the darkness and the flashlight and who knows what the hell they're going to look like. And it's going to be crazy and the person's going to run or get creamed and it's going to be insane and we're not going to know how to fight them and it's going to be so scary. That is going to be a magnificent payoff. Yes. Unfortunately, if less than that happens, it's going to (laughs) suck. And it's really going to be like, well, you know, what have we been waiting for this whole time? So I think they have to have that in their pocket. And if that's true, if they have it, then I wouldn't say anything either. You know, they can say st- stuff's coming. Anything more than stuff's coming. Right. Like you're saying, like, you know, we, we say we don't want dates. We just want to know something's coming. You know, if that's what it is, if I'm right, then they shouldn't be telling us. Agreed. Don't tell oh, us. Absolutely. Don't spoil that. But the flip side to that is... Tell us there is content. We are holding back until the bugs are fixed. That's enough. Just in that language. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is more. We're holding yeah. it back until the bugs are fixed. Would would drive people crazy with anticipation. I mean. Yeah. And I, I honestly do think that the reason we've had things like this week's the the Duvals are having a baby as a Galnet announcement, or uh the the mm. We're going to have a CG to go out and gather exploration yeah. data. Th- those are, uh, guys, we got to stretch this out a little bit more because the bugs aren't fixed yet. 
who's got an right, idea right. for a CG, you know? And how about a CG that isn't just a repeat of last week? Yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, so I, I, I do think there, because there have been some, let's face it, rather un, underwhelming both CGs and Galnet things that make you think, I don't know what's going on here. Why are they bothering? And I think a lot of that is oh, we got a pad for time here because we're not ready yet. Yeah. Sure. And that's fine. So, it, that's, you know, living universe yeah. and all that. Exactly. That's yeah. acceptable. Think about the time frame of all this, though. So, like, even if they get the the console stuff, let's say they release a patch tomorrow and say, okay, guys, the console stuff's fixed. Man, you you know that they gotta be they gotta have some time in there for console bug for them to work out some console bugs. They gotta have some time in oh, there yeah. to do that, right? Yeah, surely. Yeah. Oh, we're looking at a minimum of six months after console release, probably before they can start rolling out stuff. Right. I mean, unless they that's just a, that's nail a it. That's a timeline that won't disappoint you. Yeah. <laughs> timeline I mean, expectation. Which which assumes they don't you know, nail it on release, but they don't have a track record of nailing it on release. So Yeah. Now are the bugs typically are there are there typically like a ton of platform specific bugs? Uh PlayStation didn't have CQC for years. Yeah. Right. That's one example. And I know like that's a that's a major one. I'm not trying to downplay it and I know that was that was dumb. But like is there you know, it's been a while since since everything was unified, but like when there were bug fixes, I I don't remember if I ever paid attention to like which ones were for console and or you know, are, are aren't most of them game wide and then maybe there's a couple that are platform specific? That seems to be my feeling about it, yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I mean it it, it could be that they just don't have big problem you know by the time it's ready for consoles it's because they finally got the performance under control like yeah, i don't think i don't think they would be holding you know i really don't think that they would be holding it back from console if it was just like you know the 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 bugs of this mission you know fails where you 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 unsubscribe from a community goal when you quit a mission and like this sort of bug well but it's a the process for rolling updates out to console is a lot different. So it's Oh, it's that's easy. true. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. It's it's much easier for them to go through faster itinerations of fixes on PC. Yeah. Um yeah. I had forgotten about that. Yeah. Like a hot fix for tomorrow isn't a thing you can do through Microsoft on the Xbox. Yeah, it's gonna or validate or, all that. or through uh, or through PlayStation. Yeah, it takes weeks. Man, consoles, am I right? Consoles, <laughs> man. Can't live with them. Can't play in the same galaxy with them. <laughs> can't play, yeah. I just mean you can't you can't live with them. They're not here. They're in yeah. a different galaxy. <laughs> uh anyways. All right, guys. Uh wow. I didn't think I was yeah. gonna rant like that. Yeah, well, nothing. I ran, I rented pretty hard, so you know. I, don't, I don't know why I didn't think I was going to rant like that. <laughs> Doesn't make sense <laughs> that I thought that. Yeah. What What in your prior experience made you think you wouldn't rant like that? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it's it's um, I I have been trying to sort of disengage from uh, any Odyssey like opinion stuff. <laughs> I've been actively trying on the Discord. I keep like people talk about things. Oh, is this going on? And like sometimes it's like it's stuff I've heard about. Oh, well that fixes a th- that you know that fixes coming in this patch. Well, they said this on the stream and it's like stuff that I know. But I just like why am I the person? I'm the <laughs> guy, the one guy in this Discord that doesn't have Odyssey, <laughs> practically the one guy, right? Uh, so I've been trying to sort of like step back. Oh, I'm just going to like, I'm going to come on the podcast and I'm going to like anchor it and then just like let everybody else talk. I always talk. I always talk. That's, That's all right. right. That's what the people come for. What well, Picard well, come to. That's what they, they should learn. What is this Picard shit? <laughs> <laughs> all okay, ties so all. Earlier today, earlier today, <laughs> this is how we're ending the episode apparently. This earlier how, today. Yeah. Uh, Ty says, we're all gonna, he, we're all gonna figure out which Star Trek, the next generation characters we are, Yep. which is 
First of all, that's bonkers. Okay, second, moving on. <laughs> then I'm like, well, that looks fun. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm going to aggressively ignore this conversation. <laughs> and then he says, and then I get another ping and he says, I'm Picard. Why am I Picard? Explain this to me. Dude, you're our leader. That's yeah. why. Oh, that's you run the show. I thought it was personalities. You were saying like, what, what personalities are we or something? Did I misinterpret it? Cause I was thinking like, what, in what way is my personality? Anything like Picard? Not that I think that's a bad person to like, or, you know, be like is, is this particular character, but well, okay. No. So uh, I was basing it upon the fact that, I mean, you know, when I had to step away from this game, you didn't hesitate to step up and take care of things. And I think about how, like when the captain of the Stargazer went down, Picard, you know, took control of the helm and took control of the ship. And then like, you know, eventually became captain. And then right after that, you know, he became captain of the Enterprise. That's what, that's what started the whole thing. So, you know, now you're captain of the Enterprise, Bubba. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless he was the Picard from the alternate history and tapestry and he didn't step up and then he led an oh, unfulfilling yeah, sad he's a blue life. shirt for his whole yeah. life. And yeah. this is why this is why you're this is why you're spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of my my long term goal has been to turn this show into a Star Trek podcast exclusively exclusively. <laughs> this is just the first time it's come out into the open. So I'm, well, I'm very happy. Well, I mean, you're not wrong, so. <laughs> okay. All right, Jean Luke right, Skywalker. Uh, anyway. Anyways, uh, that's going to have to do it for the Loose Screws podcast because Chig's not here to do a cheese. I'm going to say eat tacos. I did it. Yeah. I'm still alive. Is there so, oh. No, got a competitor. that Taco is not Bells. tacos. They're chicken sandwich taco. That's, it's good. That is, that is not it's tacos. Good. That is not uh, tacos. Disclaimer, not, not uh, the, the information conveyed on the Liz Cruz podcast is the opinion of the person who said it and not necessarily the opinion of the Loose Screws organization mm. or in-game faction. Uh, <laughs> however, do eat tacos, but Taco Bell is not tacos. It's a, uh, Anyways. It's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> chicken chicken sandwich taco. Okay, go. Uh, if you like the show, please rate and review on your podcast app, which helps people find the show. Join us on Discord at discord.io slash loose screws and check out our merch store at loose for mugs, t shirts, hoodies, and more. And uh, that's going to do it for me, Commander Jan Tracks, Dubs, Hate, Data, Nurgle, Ty. Dubs had to step away. That's why he hasn't been not talking. Oh, no, wait. He has been not talking. So. Nobody probably noticed that he had to step away. I'm making that joke for him. I don't really... We think Dubs is fine. He's fine. Oh, I crashed into my career again, but this time it's because I let go of the controls. Okay. Uh, that's it. Um, I'm very distracted. Anything else anybody wants to say to the audience? <laughs> no, I got nothing. I'm done. Okay, no, good night. Bye. Bye.